Blah Mohammed, is there any chance he loses his spot? Is there any chance that he loses his place where he will be taking on the winner of Colby and Leon? And I must admit for you right up front, I don't think so. I believe a deal was made. I believe a deal was made when Blahal and Gilbert Burns fought on short notice. I believe that deal is intended to be offered. I'll start with that. But it doesn't mean there isn't a meaningful conversation. You're only as good as the information that you have at the time that you form a decision. I mean, th this, is a, this is a peculiar night in December. Colby, Leon, it's a peculiar night because the welterways are on display to a very high de degree. Now, typically and traditionally, whatever is your main event, whatever weight class your title fight is in your main event, that same weight class will be featured on the main card. That is a calculated move for understanding that if something happens to one of my athletes in the main event, I already have a licensed, a trained, and advertised date set, healthy, ready to compete athlete of the same weight class that I can move up. And there's been a number of times where we've seen that very thing happen. But this card is unique in that we have multiple welterweights, not only on the card, but on the main card that are in feature matches. So, when you end up in a situation with like that, everything, you plan it to go smoothly. You plan to have Leon. You plan to have Colby. You plan to have Bahal there in the front row for the face-off or for the cameo. But when you're doing your quote-unquote planning, it doesn't go further than that. There is not a blueprint or a memo set out. If this happens, you do this. If this happens, you are going to do nothing. You are going to do this. In this event, we go in this direction. It's not like that. It's life sport. Let me, let, let me lay out the scenario for you. When you have a clear and dedicated number one contender, it's been told, it's been told to the world. It is now accepted by the world. In theory. So when you bring him and you sit him in the audience, whoever wins that match, though you've never had a conversation with him ever as the promoter, as the decision maker, as the boss that's writing the checks, you've never had a conversation, you don't have to. He's your champion. He follows the sport. He knows that you said it even if it was two months ago. He knows exactly what time it is. He knows the guy sitting right there. He knows all of these things, and he, he goes right along with it. No problem. There's George St. Pierre, Matt Hughes won, bring him in the ring, we all know what this is about. There's Daniel Cormier, he won, Brock Lesnar enters the ring, we all know what this is about. Like, it doesn't need to be explained and or described. There's Volkanovsky, Islam won, bring him in the ring, take it from there. Like, we all just understand these types of things until we don't. I mean, let me give you an example as recently as three days ago. Usyk is there in the front row. Imagine when the fight is over that Tyson Fury Calls for someone else. I mean, just imagine that Tyson and Francis did what we wanted them to do, which is they both demand a rematch. They both call for each other. Do you believe Usyk would be next? I mean, the mere fact that they didn't do that and they went along with it and they've already scrapped the date of Usyk versus Fury shows you the ability and willingness to change things, right? I mean, have I proven my point? Let me give you a different example. Tom Aspinall lays out the plan, flies to Paris, waits his moment for Surreal to address him, and Surreal doesn't do it. Surreal's reward? He does not currently have a fight. Tom Aspinall, who did nothing, he sat in the front row, but he's the one with the plan that got burned, will be at Madison Square Garden, getting the biggest paycheck of his life and potentially a world championship. It's a big deal if a guy doesn't follow the script. But the fight that you planned to have, which was Aspinall versus the winner, which turned out to be surreal, that was the plan. That's where direction everybody was going. We're just going to look at dates. One guy burned 
entire idea. And I'm just offering you an example that you would know because if there's any part of you that believes if Holby Covington wins, he's going to turn and follow the script and go after Blahal, he's not going to. Not only is Colby going to leave that, right? He's going to go after somebody else. In fact, he's already started that, Islam Makhlchev, which was meant to do nothing other than drive Mohammed crazy. The problem is Makhlchev liked the idea and responded, and now all of a sudden you got a back and forth between these two that's beginning to brew. Which beginning to brew is as far as I can go with it, but beginning to brew versus is the match that needs to happen is the separation of one great performance and an interview on pay-per-view in front of your focus market. That's when you wake up the next day with a whole new narrative. And before we get to that point, with the welterweights that are being featured, Wonder Boy, by the way, who's going in to do a fight against a guy that nobody else is willing to fight. There's rewards should those go your way. And speaking of Rachmanov, I believe Blahal Muhammad has an excellent argument. I support Blahal Muhammad. But I also understand that all we're doing is making arguments and seeing how they stick. And if you were to raise a wonderful argument, the Blahal has had seven fights without a loss. If you were to bring that, of those seven fights, he had five of them by finish. Wow. That's impressive. Unless Rachmanov says, I've had 16 fights without a loss, and all 16 were by finish. Now you're back to go, oh my, uh, that, that, well, that's not what matters. That's not what matters. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you see where this goes? That's before you have the young up and rising Ian Gary, who now has a story and a storyline that is as markable and sellable as the day is long. Ian Gary was just thrown out of his gym in England because it's the gym of Leon, and those coaches asked Ian to go. That story. For a number one contender who is now the student that is here to kill the king, but the king is the one that started the fight, that story has never not worked. You could write a script of that story and take it to a Hollywood agent today and turn it into a movie. I mean, I'm just sharing for you. When the decision makers came in, they didn't know that Leon Garrett was about to get thrown out of the gym by Leon which is an admittance and a signal by the champ himself who felt Ian Gary, this guy's a problem. He is a big potential problem. And if that story continues to get told and Leon is to get a win and Gary, you know what Gary can do with a win and a microphone. Gary can cover more ground with a win and a microphone than most guys could do with four years of being undefeated. And I'm only for adjusting for you. All of a sudden, you start to have a very different conversation. There's a reason these killers are on display. I don't know the reason. Traditionally speaking, it would be so that somebody could be bumped up and move in. Traditionally. But now you have multiple guys featured. And you have a well-known veteran in Leon. Who's rich? Who's famous? Who's successful? Who's the main event on the card? Who kicked out of his gym... A poor, young, inspiring athlete. That story is hard to pass up. Are you so sure that Leon can beat Blahal? And are you so sure that Gary can beat whoever's next that we can preserve it and do the fight down the road? Because there's very few times in MMA where we haven't outthought ourselves, where we realize we should have made the fight we can make when we can make the fight, right? There's so many times where that ends up happening. But how respectful is Gary of Leon? First time I talked to you about him being thrown out of the gym, this happened a couple of weeks ago. Does he understand what a story this is? Does he understand the opportunity he has? Does he understand nothing is done until it's done? Does he understand that he could try to take Blahal's spot the exact same way that Blahal understood it and try to take the spot from Colby and got as close as one can get? He didn't get the fight, but he got one removed and he's next. That's what Blahal did. You want to copy Blahal? You want to be like Blahal? You just want to stand by and watch Blahal? Those questions are for you to decide.